Well, you can use your 3D glasses to watch me too if you'd like. I don't know if it'll do a whole lot of good, but today I'm here to talk to you about an ecosystem, the sagebrush, a bird, the greater sage grouse, a debt that we owe to that bird, and an opportunity to use this bird's lessons for us to do more for our environment, to do more for the way we live on the land and the use we make of it. I want you to close your mind's eye at least, if not your eyes, and then open them on that landscape in the freezing, iron-hard cold of a Wyoming morning and be a 13-year-old child again. And there is hunger in your home. This was not unusual in this tough landscape for people to be without the food they need, without a future as they could see it, but if you were a child with a stick or a sling, and it didn't matter whether you were a Shoshone child 5,000 years ago or a Polish immigrant at the turn of the last century, somewhere huddled under that roof of snow and the rafters of sage was this guy. Second largest game bird in North America, about two-thirds the size of a wild turkey. That's a lot of food. Their brain is not a whole lot better than their two eyeballs put together but they have been successful in living on this landscape for millions of years. And they have been what's for dinner. Believe me, it wasn't beef for the Shoshone and it wasn't beef for the Polish immigrant. It was the sage chicken. This is who fed the westward movement of the European and the eastward movement of the indigenous Americans. This is what we ate. This is what we lived on. This was your future or lack thereof. When George Bird Grinnell and Theodore Roosevelt sat at the base of the cliffs south of Douglas, Wyoming, and had their coffee at dawn, they watched the birds begin to gather on the edge of those cliffs. And as the sun came up, the birds started to launch. And while they sat and had their coffee, and until they were ready for their lunch, the birds blacked out the sky. They were the sagebrush. This bird is called a sage grouse for a good reason. It lives off of sage leaves for the most of its life. Now, I had a dispute with a Nevada congressman not long ago where he informed me that the only list that sage grouse belonged on was the listing of items to be served at this fine French bistro. He obviously had never eaten one. They taste very much like the sagebrush they eat but we have managed to reduce them from numbers, as I described with Theodore Roosevelt, to, in some estimates, about 5% of their original population, in most less than 3% of the population that we grew to know coming west. This is for a, from a combination of attacks, and I guess this is where I would explain the debt. This bird fed our way here I think there should be a place for it in our future. When we look around and see the changes we've made on this landscape, we've drilled it, we've cut it, we've done infrastructure on it. I've seen multiple references today to the new coming green energies. But remember, in locating those, they are only as green as we make them by locating them where they do the least harm. If we diminish the last wild places with the first of our green energy, we're taking a step back to what we did so very recently when we explored renewable energies before and dammed every major river in the country. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, we haven't quite recovered from that as yet. So it, it's important to me that we look around us and recognize the relationship that we've had to this bird but it's more than this bird. 70 species of conservation concern use the same habitat that we have just managed to protect in Wyoming over the last two years. Thanks to the previous governor, Friedenthal, we put together an implementation task force for sage grouse to avoid the necessity of listing that bird. And in that process, we've protected 15 million acres of Wyoming to no more than 5% disturbance. That didn't put an end to development for energy for our nation. It made us go about it smarter. It made us 
isolate those areas to which we could do more damage and those to which we must do less. This is an opportunity that became possible only because of the fact that we work together as an integrated group, conservationists, agriculturalists, and energy developers working towards a common solution to protect the last habitat necessary for the bird. So I would like for you to understand this bird a little better and understand its relationship to so many. Thanks to the help of our friends at uh, Really Interesting Pictures, we're going to be able to show you a bit of the dance that the Shoshone used to celebrate the spring and renew our relationship to the land. And the Shoshone elders say that every time this bird's foot touches the land, it reaffirms our connection to Mother Earth. <laughs> Thank you.